What is the key to really getting good with tension, which is then gonna equal your confidence so that you can build powerful emotional and physical confidence with small and big amounts of tension so that you can be well-rounded and very powerful. And in that way, over time, if you're willing to do the work, you're gonna see your whole life change. And not only that, you're gonna see the people around you start reacting to you differently, not just a little bit, but massively. You know, and the tension is synonymous with stress. Tension is synonymous with responsibility. The most respected people in the world handle the most tension, the most stress, the most responsibility. And to them, it's easy. They've gotten so good at it, they relax and they're calm in it. And pretty soon what makes them cause stress or tension is a lot more than, make, than, than it takes for us to feel stress and tension. The tension journal is this simple idea that I came up with years ago. I would carry this small journal in my pocket and it was usually one of those little leather bound journals that I wanted to be nice so I remembered it. And I said to myself, I was, I was sitting in an event one day and I said, I wanna get more confident. I wanna get more powerful building my confidence. I wanna enjoy it. But the problem I always ran into was that I would look at something that I needed to do, like approach that beautiful woman and tell her hi. And I would get really nervous inside. I'd get really scared and I think I have to go over and I have to hit on her, I have to get her number. And it would be so overwhelming that either I did it and I ended up beating myself up or I just wouldn't do it at all. It just wouldn't work because the, because the, the previous times when I did do it, it went so bad that I just started to create pain, just like the pain pleasure principle. What I did this time was I said, wait a minute, let me look at this a little differently. Bodybuilders, when they lift weight, they have to lift just the right amount of weight. When I go to the gym and I'm gonna build some muscle, I have to lift just the right amount of weight or my muscles don't grow. If I lift too much, I hurt myself. If I lift too little, I actually don't grow at all. Nothing happens. So imagine going to the gym and you can, li and you can bench press 135. That's two, two 45 pound plates on either side of the, the 45 pound bar. And you go to bench press. The next day you say, I'm gonna put another 45 pound plate on each side, extra 90 pounds. What would happen? You'd most likely hurt yourself. You'd create pain. How much are you gonna to wanna to go back to the gym after doing something like that? So that's what I realized. So I said to myself, what if I just say, okay, I wanna approach that beautiful girl and that's gonna be the first thing in my journal. And I'm gonna say in mall, cause I'm taking this with me and doing it on the spot. What I'm doing here is basically carrying this journal and looking for places I can step into tension. So approach beautiful woman in mall. Okay, that's, that's, that's the activity. Now I rate it from a scale of one to 10. 10 being, this is too much tension, it's gonna blow me out. As a matter of fact, I can't feel anymore, my mind is racing, I can't think, cause that's what'll happen. You either go numb or your mind will start racing a lot, or you'll go into a lot of frustration. Frustration is an indicator you're going way too far when it starts to really build up. Or one being very, very little tension. So you wanna keep it in a really good range. So let's say around a five. Okay, so five is your sweet spot. You can go less and still grow, but if you go too much less, it's gonna to start to seem so easy, it's gonna be ridiculous, and you're not gonna get much excitement out of it. You can go higher and still grow, especially when you get used to it. As you start to build more confidence, sevens and eights are actually gonna seem more fun, but in the beginning, let's start with fives. So approaching the beautiful woman and hitting on her, telling her you like her is maybe too much. That's a, let's say that's a 10. So that would be a 10. Well, how do I reduce that 10 to a five? Could I ask her a phone number? Could I ask her directions? Could I give her a simple compliment on something like, yeah, it's a beautiful scarf you're wearing, or you have great energy about you, or I love your smile, have a beautiful day, and I just walk off. What do I have to do to reduce that all the way down to a five and get it down from a 10? That's what you wanna put that's what you want to do. And then you go do it. And you're going to, whatever it is, and it could be one, two, or three, or as many as you want, she liked it. It could even be something as simple as, as she wandered off and didn't take your compliment well, but you weren't bothered by it. Wow, that barely bothered me. I hardly noticed it. I handled that well. That was easy. You know, things like that. And you can get more detailed or more de uh, or, or less detailed. I'm actually not being super detailed because I don't have a real experience, but uh, I might actually add a little more detail in the beginning. Because tension, stepping into tension is what grows your masculine, is what makes you feel alive. It's what makes the masculine feel alive. Challenge and, uh, and stepping into challenge and going for it. Challenge is another word. 
And uh, I want to add one more piece as a reminder to kind of put this down. If you're avoiding tension in your life, you probably are seeking it out in some weird way. For example, not really a weird way, but in some other way. So let's say you're a nice guy and I was an extreme nice guy and you've been avoiding tension and, and you're not doing anything like this and you're just kind of going through life and everything seems humdrum and doesn't seem to have a sense of purpose. You want to get a, a little excitement that night, that weekend. You want to get out and feel some tension. But even maybe going to playing sports isn't a thing for you because some guys will play sports to get their fill of tension. Some guys become uh, salesmen and they really go for it. Some guys start their own business. Other types of extreme sports like rock climbing and mountain climbing. But let's say you don't do any of that. I didn't. Let's say your idea of fun is um, staying at home and watching TV, going to the movie theater. Think about it for a minute. What kind of movies do you watch? Do you watch movies that step into tension or avoid tension? You know, a lot of guys love to watch their action films. They love to watch uh, James Bond. They love to watch Jason Bourne. They love to watch characters that are really good with tension from a nice air conditioned room, nice screen. They're relaxed in their cushy seat. They got their soda, they got their food. So on one level, they're super comfortable, but they're still getting their fill of tension. Let's say you like romantic comedies. I like those as a nice guy, I'll, I'll completely admit it. And it's the same thing. The character in the beginning is completely buffoon, a buffoon with tension. He's horrible at it. He's fumbling through it all the time. But by the end of the movie, he gets his shit together, handles a lot of tension and wins the girl back, okay? Then there's also the aspect of the emotional tension that he has to step into with her. Not physical, but emotional, different type of tension. So we really are interested in this on a huge level as, as human beings. I mean, the news is a perfect example, but it's another form of watching tension. And what I would say to you is not only start developing your ability to step into tension the way you choose, but also start looking for healthy forms of tension.